Well, the hour being three o'clock. <laughs> the hour being three o'clock, we'll call this uh, agenda and priorities meeting of town council to order it's on July 19th, 2021. We have an agenda before us, or are there any additions or deletions? No? Then would someone like to move we adopt this agenda? Yes, Your Worship, I would move the agenda as presented. Thank you, Councillor Hill. All in favor? Carried. First thing on the agenda, uh, Discovery Wildlife Park request for letter of support. A point of order. I'd like to recuse myself from this item. Oh, okay. All right. Okay, um, proceed then with the uh, letter of request, CAO Becker. Thank you, Your Worship. So Discovery Wildlife Park uh, development permit to construct 10 new cabins to be added to the uh, existing campground was approved by council as part of the direct control district at the June 28th council meeting. The Discovery Wildlife Park has approached the town seeking a letter of support for their application to the Travel Alberta Tourism Asset Grant. As outlined in the supporting information, the grant program is designed to assist Alberta businesses and municipalities with launching at or completing new shovel-ready tourism infrastructure initiatives and enables the diversification or expansion of the guest experience through new product assets that will stimulate visitation, generate new revenue, and support economic revitalization. As the uh, information uh, indicates, the grant offers two funding streams and the uh, funding stream that Discovery Wildlife Park is applying for is the um, tourism asset grant components. Um, the grant is a $100,000 grant uh, with, no, um, with no partnership or um, split with with uh, with the discovery, it's a full full grant of one hundred thousand uh, dollars. They're asking uh, council to consider providing a letter of support for their <coughs> for their application. Okay, is uh, anyone prepared to make a motion to that effect? <coughs> yes, your worship. Uh, I move the council direct administration to draft a letter of support for the Discovery Wildlife Parks application for a Travel Alberta Tourism Asset Grant. Thank you, Councillor Harrison. Discussion. Just, yes. just a question. So, this being an AMP, do we, do we approve it then at a? What is this an exceptional thing or what? Um, I, you know, I, I was going to read the procedure bylaw. In advance, so I think we can advise it to the regular council, but we can deal with it uh, next week. Um, however, due to the um, desire of Discovery Wildlife to advance their application immediately, the council could provide a motion, um, then we can formalize it uh, with the CAO report next week. Okay, thank, thank you. Um, uh, your I think I would, support, oh, oh, I would support. I would support. I would make that a rem, uh, excuse me, that amendment to my motion. Okay, thank you. Any other discussion? No, all in favor of the motion. Carried, thank you. I guess uh, if you'd like to allow Mr. Reberger to return. <laughs> Probably went home. Okay, uh, next on the agenda, the, uh, the Innisfil Municipal Measurement Index, uh, Director Vickers. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, 
So I'm, we're bringing this report forward today to provide council financial information of the performance of the town of Innisfil compared against other municipalities. So in 2018 and previous, um, the province would provide a report called the financial indicator graphs um, that would include comparable communities to the town of Innisfil and that would, and that would show um, financial and statistical data um, against those community, right, against those things. Anyway, in 2019, the province moved this information online and created the financial indicator graphs dashboard and the Alberta Municipal Measurement Index dashboard. So the financial indicator graphs or FIG still provide an opportunity for Albertans to explore a municipality's financial and statistical data in the context of the minimum, medium and maximum of all municipalities in Alberta of the same type. So you can no longer um, specifically choose which municipalities to compare against when you're looking at that dashboard. You, the town of Innisfil goes against all towns. So all towns across Alberta. So the FIG dashboard is an updated, upgraded, sorry, version of the static PDF reports previously made available to municipal administration and councils and serves as an important supplement to the municipal measurement index. So I have attached all the 2020 financial indicator graphs um, to this report for your reference. So the big change is the Alberta Municipal Measurement Index, right? So that's kind of their new thing that they've replaced the financial indicator graphs with. So they are designed to improve local government financial reporting and allow Albertans to evaluate the performance of their local government in comparison with other municipalities based on key fiscal indicators. So a municipality index is generated for a meaningful comparison across municipalities based on equalized assessment, population, and area. It's recommended selecting municipalities with a plus or minus 10 for the best comparison. So they have given every single municipality in Alberta like a, like a grade or a rate, right? Um, so the town of Innisfil was given a score of 79. Um, so then for the purposes of this report, um, an administration has chosen municipalities listed below and they range from 76 to 84. So you can see the list like Rocky Mountain House and Town of Devon were given a rate of 76. Coaldale, Bonneville and Pinoca, 77. Mournville, 78. Innisfil, Black Falls and Olds were all given 79. Hinton and High River were given a rate of 83 and then Sylvan Lake was given a rate of 84, sorry. So the MMI dashboard includes several dynamic customizable visualizations based on information submitted by municipalities annually as required under the Municipal Government Act through the financial information return and the statistical information return. So the current uh, visualizations that they have are the residential tax rate, non-residential tax rate, municipal tax levy, the compos composition of assessment, municipal debt per capita, long-term debt to debt limit rate ratio, revenue and expenses per capita, and accumulated surplus per capita. So they do um, update these visualizations bi-weekly. So the results can change if you go back to them um, as they get updated. And in the future, they are looking to add in a few more um, of these visualizations. Um, could be business licenses, building development permits, and uh, municipal service levels. So the first one is the residential tax rate. So this shows the amount of tax payable per thousand dollars of taxable property assessment. Um, this is taken from our annual tax rate bylaw. When we complete our statistical information return, we have to provide the government with our tax bylaw annually. So that's how they... Uh, receive this information. And this is only just our municipal tax rate. This doesn't include anything like the school tax or, or the seniors housing. So you can see that Innisfil is rated at, we have 6.6. .6. The range is 5.4 up to 9.3. And the median rate is 7.1. So non-res is similar to residential, right? It just shows the amount of tax payable per thousand dollars of taxable property assessment for non-residential. And this is also taken from our tax bylaw. <coughs> so Innisfil is rated at, at 
our current is 8.2. The range is 8.1 to 11.2, and the median is 9.5 for non-res. So the next one is municipal tax levy. So this shows just an approximation of what residents and businesses pay towards the municipal portion only of their tax bill. So this does not include taxes collected for schools and seniors lodges as they are collected by the province. So for the basis of this grid, I did pick an assessment value of $300,000. That is what our, that's what the town of Innisfil's average residential property is at, but the average for the properties combined is 340,824. So for residential taxes, Innisfil pays $1,983 when the range is 1624 to 2782 and the median is 2119. And then for non-res, Innisfil will pay 2446 and the range is 2439 to 3375 and the median is 28.45. And again, that's only on $300,000. So composite composition of assessment, it shows the percentage of municipal properties that are classified as residential, non-residential and farmland. And this represents um, the, the tax bill that they receive each year. Now it does say farmland, the amount is so tiny that you can't even really see it unfortunately on on the grid, right? But Innisfil's residential 75% and the non-res is 25%. So the range for residential goes from anywhere from 62% to 88%, where the medium is 79%. And then for non-res, it goes anywhere from 12 to 38%, and their median is 21%. So we have a little bit more residential than non-res compared to the, sorry, we have a little bit more non-res than residential compared to the median. So the next report is the municipal debt per capita. So this shows short-term debt and long-term debt divided by the municipality's population. Short-term debt is anything less than a year and long-term debt is anything greater than a year. Um, as you can see, the town of Innisfil doesn't actually have any long-term debt anymore. We only have short-term debt. And that is considered things like our accounts payable, like anything that's outstanding that we haven't paid yet things like that, that's what short-term debt is considered. Um, so short-term debt in as well as 282, the range is 282 to 1,070, and the median is 520, and long-term debt in as well has zero. So the range is actually zero to 3,477 with the median being um, 1,712. Now, and just because they show this per capita doesn't mean that that's what each resident is required to pay. That's just how they use to rate us against other municipalities. So the next one is long-term debt ratio. So this shows the municipality's long-term debt as a percentage of the municipality's debt limit. So the debt limit for municipalities is set by legislation as 1.5 times a municipality's annual revenue. And we receive this information from our auditors every year when they do our financial statements. So the green number indicates the percentage of debt used. So you can kind of see where municipalities are at. So Innisfil obviously has 0% used and the range is 0% to 96% and the median being at that 46% range. And then the remaining borrowing capacity, Innisfil does have 100% available currently with the range being 4% to 100% and the median being 54%. So the next report pulls our revenue and expense um, information and does it per capita to show municipalities the total revenue expenses divided by their population. So in fell for our total revenue per capita, we have 2,845 with the range being 2,572 up to 7,263 with the median being 3,480. And then the total expenses per capita in has 2,637 with the range being 2005 all the way up to 3293 and the median being 2708. So this is the last report here. 
and this is the accumulated surplus per capita. So this shows our financial resources, both cash and non-cash that a municipality has available, available to provide future services for a resident. So the non-financial assets listed in the green are the assets owned by the municipality, such as roads, buildings, vehicles, and equipment. And then the financial assets listed in blue, that is the money in the bank, money owed to the municipality and accounts receivable, um, and money um, set aside in reserve for specific purposes. So as you can see, Innisfil has non-financial assets per capita of $11,593, where the range is $71.57 all the way up to $32.476, and the median is that $14,117. And then financial assets, Innisfil has um, $2,704, with the range being 492 to 4178, with the median being 2195. And that's it for the report. Thank you, Erica. Uh, any questions of the uh, information? Erica's passed on to us. So, um, through to Erica. I'm having difficulty trying to figure out exactly the ratings and how they accumulate, like what's good, what's bad on some of those categories. Um, obviously debt, that's easy. But some of the other categories, does like there's eight factors go in there. Is each one of them given an even weight? Like your uh, long-term debt is as important as the accumulated surplus is as important as the residential tax rate or all these are those? these are eight very separate things like that the, but the rating this, the, the rating of 79 has nothing to do with our municipal tax rate and and where we fall in line that's a separate category that's a separate category that okay. the provincial government just just rated every um every municipality whether it's a town city um, by looking at things like population size, our, our assessment, um, just so that we could use those numbers and use those municipalities that are close to us and number to create those kind of reports, right? So that we're not trying to compare ourselves with the city of Calgary, for example, right? So we really, we really don't know all the components that go into that 79 versus somebody else's? No, on their website, when they did this like there wasn't a full breakdown of how they rated everything like how much did they give on population how much did they give on on size of municipality they just gave us a list of okay thank of you the... <clears throat> council harrison uh, thank you your worship uh, <clears throat> through to uh director vickers um do we publish these somewhere? Like, do we make this information available to our our residents on uh, on our homepage on our website? Because I think it's important that you know the the folks that that live here and pay taxes under see that yeah. uh, you know when it and I always hear our taxes are high and you know we can't do this and we can't do that. But when you look at these kind of comparisons, uh, Innisfil is it probably in the bottom half. Yeah. of the municipalities that we compare to. And, you know, other than council and administration, uh, you know, explaining when somebody comes in, uh, maybe it's just, we just put it out there because these are pretty easy to understand. Yeah. Uh, so I guess my comment would be, do we uh, publicize them and do we make them available to our residents? Your Worship, through to Councillor um, Harrison. So the last time that Innisfil did financial indicator graphs was in 2017 for the 2015 year, and that was published. We have since pulled it down because it is older, but we can definitely publish these, these new reports on our website on the financial page. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you. So your worship, through to Director Vickers, is this up-to-date information? Like you said, it updates weekly. So mm -hmm. your worship, through to Councillor Barclay. So this is information that I pulled off of the website um, last week. Yeah. Um, and most of this information gets updated when we submit our financial information returns 
Yeah. And I think Town of Hinton was the only one that didn't have any information right. in here, yeah. right? So, okay. Yeah, yeah I, I agree with Councillor Harrison. It's very important information, and I, I would even personally like some hard copies yeah. uh, to, to give out to some people and, you know, share with, you know, organizations like the Chamber of Commerce, for example. And I think it's really important. And, um, it, it bodes very well for Innisfail, and we, yeah. we talk about it a lot, but the general public may not know exactly in what good financial shape we are, so yeah, thanks. Perfect. I can definitely do that for sure. Um, I, I am looking for a motion that the Council accepts this report as information. I will make that motion. Okay, then. thank you, Councillor Barkley. Any discussion? All in favor of the motion. Carried. Thank you. <clears throat> well, we can move on to uh, round table discussions, I guess. There's oh, I'm sorry. Your worship. There's another report. Under Erica. Okay. Well, that was all one report. I don't have another report. Should no, I don't think there's another. Okay, sorry, I thought you were going to go through the graphs that that's all part of it. Okay, it's fine. That's <laughs> I, can, I, can, I can go through no, them don't. if you'd like. Councillor Haley, you look <coughs> anxious. <laughs> Thank you, Your Worship. Um, yeah, no, as far as the round table discussion goes today, not much to add. Um, it's nice to finally see a little bit of a little bit of smoke moving around. Hopefully it doesn't settle in for too long, but uh, nothing too much more to add at this time. Thank you. Okay. Pete. It was a quiet week for me too. Um, I will mention I, I did a, a little tour to Southern Alberta and we have no idea how lucky we are at this point with the crops in this area compared to let's say down around the Vulcan area, there's just nothing literally nothing and it's beyond recovery so nope that's all i have thank you okay Councillor barkley yeah thank you um yes so i was at the um Innisfail lantern festival workshop on saturday and also spent a little bit of time at baseball tournaments so great to see the, the town so busy this past weekend my goodness uh, tomorrow we'll have MPC and then volunteering at Tim Hortons on Wednesday. The Innisfail Lantern Festival is on Saturday, the actual event. And this morning I actually met with uh, Alicia Fox from RPAP, so the Rural Health Professions Action Plan. <laughs> it's hard to remember that acronym all the time. And uh, maybe something, CEO Becker, that um, we have Alicia come to an AMP meeting and she, her and her family have, have actually just moved to Ennisvale. And so she would love to come present to council about what RPAP is all about and, and what they do. They're funded through the Ministry of, of uh, Alberta Health, of course, and um, kind of around recruitment and retention of health professionals in, in communities. They work with schools to uh, kind of show school kids, probably grade nine to 11, um, careers in, in the, the healthcare world and, and stuff. So lots of good things. And she's very, very happy to be living here in Innisfail. Okay. Councillor Reberger. Uh, I had a pretty quiet week, but I will be uh, bringing a barbecue out to the Lantern Festival and checking that out. Councillor Harrison. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, also, a, quite a quiet week. I, I'd just like to say that uh, the crossing on 50th here looks really good. I uh, hope they'll probably be done sometime this afternoon. So uh, that'll take uh, a lot of the sting out of every time you have to cross on, on 54. Um, I also have camp day uh, with Tim Hortons on the 21st. I'll be volunteering over there. So I encourage all my colleagues to stop by and uh, buy a bracelet or a coffee. Uh, there's a dollar from each one that's being contributed to Tim Horton's camps all across Canada for children that are underprivileged. So I work from nine till 10. So I'd like to see all your smiling faces if we could. Thank you. Uh, and also uh, lots, uh, lots happening in town this weekend. Uh, 
we had the baseball uh, tournament uh, over at uh, Dodds Lake, uh, very positive. There was a large group from Calgary came up. Uh, they're actually visiting the jungle farm and they stopped here first time in Innisfail and they had a picnic in uh, the lot that uh, with the little shrubs around it. Yeah, large family picnic. They made their, their own, own meal there. So that was, that was good to see. Um, and I think that's, uh, that's about all I got coming up, uh, coming up this week. So thank you, Your Worship. Okay, thank you, Councilor Harrison. <clears throat> I uh, certainly have to give, uh, give some credit to the staff as, as uh, that uh, ball tournament came on to them. It's a bit of a surprise. And <laughs> uh, they pulled it together, I thought, very well for us on a short notice. So thank you for that, Todd, and your, your staff. Uh, I, I didn't get a chance to get down. I was away, but I'm assuming we got that many kids together. They had a good weekend. Yeah, but that's great. Uh, I also had a, a, a Mountain View Regional Water Services uh, meeting on Wednesday and uh, things are rolling along. The, the plant is... Uh, we're putting out about 15 to 16,000 uh, cubic meters of water a day. And, uh, and apparently the plant is handling it very well. And as long as we've got the raw water coming down the river, we'll be okay. And uh, uh, the plant at this point in time is capable of like 25,000 uh, cubes a day. So it's not that we're close to, to uh, capacity but uh, the um, the only thing is, is of course I, I know uh, mo most of our us are operating on a level one water restriction to try and minimize you know as the use of water as much as possible and then also reduces the load on our wastewater which is very expensive so you know that in combination of those two it, it still encourages water conservation but uh, it's good to know that we've got the capacity and we're not like some of our friends to the south mm -hmm. but uh, anyways that's about all i had quickly go around the table Stephen, have you got anything no you got everything done on your account megan you got anything? <laughs> ken it's fine Nothing, nothing going on, Mr. Becker. Okay. Um, see, we have some people in the gallery here. I guess it's to do with the in camera. So uh, I guess if that wraps up the uh, roundtable discussions, I would entertain a motion to move in camera. Your Worship, I would make the motion to move in camera. Okay. Thank you, Councillor Hill. All in favor? Carry. I'm going to take a minute break. Jim down at the ball. <laughs> <laughs>